Chair Cook and uh, John Lou, and we're here to uh, be part of the, the second uh, uh, bird talk of the season. And if you've been if you've been over to my daughter's archer group for the hour before, and she did a bird, now we're going to do another bird. Then we're going to hop back over to her and do a bird. Then you're going to hop back to me, and then you're going to hop back to her. And we'll each have done three birds. So let's we're doing it, John. If you want to just um, come on down to the, I'll, I'll I'll introduce and welcome everybody as I crowd straight on. These are little six by six gallery graphs, canvas and two feet straight mark as you got to get carry. And um, these are nice because you paint around the sides. The color that you're looking at is just white and and dodgy purple. That's the dry. That's our that's our dry color. No, and I know a lot of you want to paint along. I'm going to suggest rather than panning. See what you can do to um, see what you can you know gain a little bit of insight if you want to draw it on or whatever. But try to see what you can learn from what we're showing you. Come back and paint it. Take your time. Don't rush. These are really neat uh, pictures, and, I, and I'm going to make this easy. So you're going to do a fabulous job. I know it. And but don't panic. Don't rush. Just it, let's, let's enjoy the experience. We want to thank our moderators. Uh, oh, shoot. What? So your mic was off, but go now. They could still hear you through my mic. Oh, okay. Well, we want to thank our moderators uh, for um, for t participating in this day-long event. I'm going to say it again. This is the second uh, bird hop of the season. This is where you have probably been over to the archer for watching a uh, her a uh, uh, paint a bird, then you you've hopped over to me. We've got the traceables up on our website, um, and they're pretty easy. Just a little outline. You don't need a lot of. Um, I would just trace in the bird, and maybe a couple branches, and that'd just be it. I wouldn't bother with all the flowers. I think that they're pretty pretty easy. The flowers. I don't think you probably need all that. Sometimes you can get uh, just kind of. Uh, discombobulate yourself trying to do too much, right? So nobody's going to panic. We're all doing good here. We're going to have fun today. We're going to be doing three birds, and they're all part of this series. If you were lucky enough to be part of our bird hop, hop last time, these are the three birds that we did, okay? These were, you know, very basic, you know, beginner birds. We're going to keep adding to that. You guys are going to have a great collection of birds. And uh, one of the things when you're doing Sorrel transfer paper is just double check and make sure that you can see the mark on your canvas. And I like to take a pen and go over it several times, you know, kind of go back and forth because I'm never convinced that it sees anything. Does that make sense? I'm just not a big convinced person on that. Um, The, again, these are pretty simple bird shapes. Um, I uh, got the little footies here on this little branch. And it's, I guess that's a footie and that's a branch. Okay, there's another footie. And then you've got this branch kind of coming up this way. And that should be about all there is to our bird, little round eye. Incidentally, birds, here's a tip that you can take if you're painting a lot of birds. Animals' eyes are not people eyes. Dogs, for instance, eyes tend to be rounder. Uh, bird's eyes are for sure round. If you make a bird's eye too large, it will look cartoonish. Look, I don't know why barn looks like a cartoon. It's because you made the, you made the, um, uh, you, you made the, um, the eye too big. Okay, just you could write that down. You know, it's kind of we're gonna give you lots of tips. There's gonna be a, um, uh. Uh, some giveaways for some of these for for uh, three prints and a Salvador paint set. We're gonna give give give, give away that, and uh, we'll tell you how at the, t toward the middle of the show how to how to uh, read, uh, to enter those. Okay, here's my bird. You see that's pretty much on there. I can and take that was a, Sorrel paper she was using there. That was Sorrel paper, Sorrel transfer paper. If you don't have that, just take some light chalk. And smear a bunch like pow, you know, against the back of a paper. Do it a couple times, gonna blow off the excess, and do it again, right? And and see if that doesn't. Um, that works very well too, you know. Just just plain chalk, you know, or pastels, something like that. You can do that. 
So there's our bird. Now, uh, in essence, it's as easy as, as e easy as that, right? And I think we've got a, here I've got a branch coming this way and I can kind of start it down here like that. There's a branch coming here, going up like that. All right, so th that we'll put in later. Again, this is a dashing purple and white on a six uh, by six little uh, creative edge, edge uh, canvas. These are called gallery wrap because they're wide and they go all the way around. And the trick is sometimes it's nice you kind of paint the stick all the way around paint some stuff all the way around they make you can put these just stand them up on a mantle or hang them on a wall make nice gifts once you get the hang of it you'll wonder why you haven't been doing gallery wrap all along because you don't frame those then all right so the colors we're using are um uh burnt sienna cad yellow medium burnt umber cad red medium thalo blue thalo green Dajnine purple, ultramarine blue, and we are using magenta. Now, I know that wasn't a cinnamon's list, but I think that maybe there was a miscommunication. But magenta is a color you cannot make. Okay? you can. I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to show you later how to make yellow oxide, show you a little color mixing trick where you don't have to have yellow oxide. I'll show you how to make it if you have something else. But you cannot make um, it's that that color. All right, so let's start with our bird. And I'm going to take some Dazzling Purple. And I think we also have black, too. That was another color we were going to use, which I don't see out. But we, we will be doing some black. All right. So let's just take this and um, come around with the Dazzling Purple. This is a little um, 3 8 inch uh, silver uh, brush. And I'm going to come under here like this and paint that dark purple. And I want to invite, if you want to chat, you've got to subscribe. So I'm going to invite everybody to, to subscribe to the channel. And I'd love it as you take a moment, like us, and share the videos. Put the word out, you guys. This is what we're doing. Put the word out. Okay, so we're going to do the back third of this wing. It's going to be purple. And as long as we've got it on the brush, let's just go ahead and use the tip of that brush and put in the legs. Like that. They're going to say they're kind of straight, kind of bird legs. Ever heard someone has bird legs? Mm. They're very thin. You know, kind of keep that in mind. Now, the reason we like these angle brushes is because you can get a very thin line. All right. And uh, let's see, I think a little purple and red, I think, do this dark beak. Just a little, little, kind of a little triangle there. We'll get all that in. Yeah. So far, pretty. We haven't stressed anybody out yet. Yeah. Any questions, John? Uh, nothing that hasn't been handled. My cleanness. All right. So I'm I'm rinsing the brush. I've got a nice rag here. Now I want to take um, some uh, burnt sienna, and I want to take a little bit of green, phthalo green, and mix those together, and a little yellow. Now that's a nice um that's a nice green, isn't it? Look at that sort of a a, a a kind of a loden green. Have you ever heard that expression loden like the I think it comes from uh, um some sort of fabric in Germany, I think probably if we got any of our um uh, viewers from Germany, uh, we always think of loden green as this sort of this uh, almost um moss green that's but it's darker. So we're gonna come along here like this and suggest. Uh, we've got some crooked branches, something coming up like this. Remember, branches are crookedy. We're doing that. That's a very technical term. Crookedy, I think so. Crookedy. So they're not spaghetti noodles. You're not drawing spaghetti. You're drawing branches, and we're going to say this is coming off like this. And and as we talked about, branches are generally wider as they are part of the tree, and then they get thinner as they go out. Yep. Yeah? So everybody's familiar with that yeah All right now that's pretty easy yeah so you're going okay no stress there now here's the thing i'm not going to rinse the brush i just want you to see something if we're not going to rinse it we're going to just take a paper towel here i'm going to wipe it off just i want some green on it still but i've wiped it off now i'm going to take some yellow and uh that's just cad yellow medium and curving it over like the way it, the top of an m curves the letter m then it curve over some um, I want to keep the bottom 
the top half lighter than the bottom half. So this is the darker side is underneath on the branch. Okay. Wipe the brush off and just take a little white. And I want some of this even lighter still. So I'm going to just tap that in there. If you over, because we haven't dried anything. So if you keep brushing it, just tap it in there like that. You know, just pat it down. The top part of that. So there's our lighter branch. And that was pretty easy, yeah? So, okay, so what else could I do? Well, um, I'm telling you what, we're going to get through this bird right quick. You're going to love how easy this bird is to do. Um, I want to take a little bit of um, magenta and white. This is the titanium white. And the um, a little bit of magenta and white and a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Put that with it. So I've got sort of a violet color. And this is a, this is a really nice color. A little bit more magenta. Just a touch of blue on it. I want to come up here like this and suggest right here that that's a bit lighter. And maybe right here on his head. You don't really want any water on your brush to do this. Okay. And then I want a little bit of this color. I don't know, right here and maybe on the, on the, just put it on the back of his tail. Okay. Rinsing that off. That's easy. You're going, man, I had no idea this bird was going to be so easy. So now you've got, remember we did that load in green, right? I'm going to put some more burnt sienna with it in yellow. Okay. And more, more yellow. Now, let's see, a little tiny bit of cad red medium. There you go. It's an interesting color. And we're going to come under here on his tummy and paint uh, this. Here, here's a question that many acrylic artists probably have in their mind. I'm wondering why Ginger is not painting from back to front. Um, That's a good question. And the reason I'm not doing it is because... Uh, there's a style that we're creating on this particular bird, okay? And in order to facilitate that that style, I need to do it this way. Because the background is going to be nice and thick. We're going to do it that way. All right, so there's, I'm going to let that dry, right? And then I'm going to rinse the brush, wipe all that off. See that? It's still paint on there, but wipe it off. I'm going to take some titanium white. And I know I want a little bit of white right here on this this bird right here. That's got a little bit of the white right here on his little cheek right there. That's easy. There's a little bit of white right here, but that's still not going to be as white because why? This is still wet. So what do we got? When we do this, we've almost got a light yellow. See how we're bringing some light under here. Wipe the brush off because it's like mopping a floor. We're picking up the color underneath. So this is what you can do without drawing, without using the hair dryer. What can I do that it's kind of maybe on the top of his back? I'll make that a little lighter. Okay. I can do that much. I know I want something darker, so I'm going to make sure I don't have any white on the brush. You can't make a dark color once you've had white on the brush. And I want this, this, these feathers to be darker. So that was my first shot at those, but they're not dark enough. So I'm going to make sure I have these feathers darker here. It's dark up on top of his head like that. Top of his head is round. You know, okay, good. We're good with that. All right, so we can be doing that. Let's see, how am I doing? Oh, we're perfect. So I well, that's drying, okay? Um, I'm going to change brushes. And let's see, I'm going to do use this angle brush here. This is a Bristolon silver uh, uh what is this? Three quarter. Five, three quarters. Three. Okay. And I want to mix a gray color. So I'm going to take some white and add it to that kind of background color we just did for the bird. I'm going to add that. Take a little Dazneen purple and add it to there. Using some of these same colors. I'm going to come up here like this and start adding some color here like that. Just kind of, I'm not... I'm going to add other colors to that. Here's a color on top of that. So it's not just one color. It's, um, put a little magenta in that. There we go. And you kind of come right up to your um, branch. 
Uh, Carol would like to know, are you using any paint mediums or thinners or slow drying agents, anything at all? Nothing like that. We use a stay wet palette. It's really the only thing we do to keep it keep it moist and uh -huh. pliable. And you'll okay. notice that ginger uses a lot less water than cinnamon does. Two yeah, different, like next two to totally another. different styles. Yeah, so we're going to come up here like this, kind of cut in the head of the bird like that. And we're going to come in here like that. And so we've got this sort of beige color. And if some of the purple shows through, that's why we painted it purple the in the first place. Yes? So let's just, we're, when we're varying the colors, so that there's not one background color, it's just there's several colors, but they're all in very light shades of beige. Okay. And I don't mind if I have a little bit of the purple showing through here. That's That makes it more interesting. See that? It's just not painted. Here, I'll put a little of this magenta up here too. Just, we don't need everything to be the same. See, and it's just kind of turning the brush over, moving that. And this has to be dark enough because we're going to have white flowers. So if you get this background too light where the flowers are, so I'm going to take a little bit more of the magenta, maybe even a little burnt umber with that magenta, make a little bit darker color down here because I need my, try a little ultramarine blue with that. Ooh, that's too much. So if we had too much, you don't do anything with that. Leave that alone. Come over here and mix another color. Okay, let's put a little bit of burnt sienna in. Don't try to do anything with that color. Here's our another gray. See that? And so we're basically mixing grays. Okay, and we're just going to come here like that. Again, you want to change. We've got white flowers that are going to be here. And so we need those flowers to show up. Yes? So see how we've done the background? It looks very painterly because there's a little bit of... Um, um, paint, there's a little bit of this paint showing through, here's a little purple here. Um, uh, just go ahead and go ahead and use your leftover paint and just paint the sides of this and don't be afraid to let some of this uh, other color show through. Have fun with this. This is a good example and sort of not overworking a canvas. So just add a little more white up here and just Gives everything a chance to dry. See that? And um, I think you're going to love the birds we're painting today. The very last bird is going to be our duck. And we've done something special with the duck. He's an artist duck for sure. Wait till you see this, the last one. He has so many colors. Beautiful duck. Can you see? Notice, John, can you zoom in on that to see how we've left a little of that purple showing? See, mm -hmm. that's why you want that underpainting like that. Let's just turn it over here like that. There we go. Let's take a little bit of this color here. Let's try a little bit. Yellow and, and purple and white will make a gray. Did you guys know that? It will. You put a little purple with the white and the yellow, and you've got a really interesting gray. I don't want anything that dark, but I, that's that's how you get a gray. See that? Add more white. Kind of a beige gray. Let's get. Okay, so. Hey, we'd like to thank Tammy for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. Thank you, Miss Tammy. And she says, thank you for these bird hops. They are wonderful, happy heart hugs. Oh, thank you, Tammy. And I'll tell you what, uh, we if you go to our website, you have to. In order to get the traceable, we they are free, but we do want you on the bird hops. They're free, but we do you do need to subscribe to our channel, to uh you have to, to our uh, website to our website rather. We have a membership website, and that's just how our system works. So you have to you know it's free. You don't worry about it. We don't we use don't the do emails it. for anything. We barely do emails to our regular people. So there. So there's my see see how that's I've got a, my that background. That's a great start. That's a great start. Yes and yes. And uh, I can even take a little zinc white and just I want to say I want this beige. It's a really kind of a beige background. See, I mean that's what it is. So if I needed to just pop that up in a few places, I can do that. But there's my there's my. It's a good start, yeah. 
So that little brush goes goes here. This is come on, it's fun, right? You guys having fun? Yeah. Oh, yes, do. we're having fun. Okay, so next. Uh we need a little brush for some uh let's see, we need a little tiny brush. This is a little tiny angle brush. This is a one quarter inch angle brush. <laughs> oh that would be a ruby satin silver type. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take some white and some phthalo blue. Okay. All right. I'll put that on the brush and then a tiny bit of ultramarine blue, too. We're going to have two colors on there. And we want to say the top of his head. These are six by six canvas, gallery wrap canvas, six by six. Top of his head is uh, got that. Let's make something a little darker. Yeah, nice hairdo. He's got the little dark. And let's put some of this light color on his tail feathers, like that. There's just a few little skinny lines here. Yeah, want a little bit of a light blue. Let's see, a little bit of phthalo blue. Let's try a little phthalo green with that. Then a little white. Now I'm going to wipe the brush off because I've been mixing with it, and that flattens it out. Did you guys know that? That will flatten it out. It's important to wipe the brush off. There you go. Here's the the tail feathers. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little round eye right here. Just use the corner. Use the corner and just make a little circle. Can you see my hand? Use the corner of the brush and just make a little tiny circle like that. And that's how you get the eye. Sounds kind of tricky, but it really isn't. And um might even make it a little lighter. You don't need much paint. Just little circle here and then we'll put the black dot in the middle that'll be easy okay and then i want to come on top of the beak here like this the top half of the beak is a little lighter got a little bit of a blue on the top part like that there you go all right so far so good yeah wow you just didn't realize you could get this far along that fast right all right so we're going to rinse the brush then we're going to wipe it off on a towel really wipe it off and I want some dark purple and ultramarine blue. I want something really dark. And I'll make sure that I have the um, too much paint on the brush. you got to be careful. It's going to come in here like that. Make sure I've got something dark right back here on the back of his little neck right there. They're not dark enough. I think there's a little dark. Here we go. That white may not quite be dry enough right there we go all right so so far so good now our background believe it or not is is uh, pretty dry but we still need to put some dark right under here there's a little dark spot under his tail feathers right there and uh, let's kind of put his legs back in because we may have lost them <gasps> lost his legs okay so let's put some purple and yellow and green together make this dark green and we need a little bit of dark right up here on the wings okay a little bit of dark here a little bit more yellow and a little bit of dark right here right there nothing too much okay so we're just saying that there's where some dark is oh you're going wow i had no idea it was that easy yeah but this looks so hard but it wasn't all right so curve that make sure that's curved Okay. All right, now I'm going to put that brush away and get out a larger one. Uh, let's try this one. This is a 3 8 inch. And I think our branches are dried enough where we can start putting some flowers. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take some white and it's going to have a little tiny bit of blue in it. All right. And we're going to come up here like now. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to make them. It's one stroke, right? Put a little more blue on it. One stroke, one stroke. And then maybe go this way and then corner, right? And I know I want a flower up here, just kind of four petals. Okay. And then as I come up here, I'm going to change colors and put a little bit of white and um, that burnt sienna on the brush. So it's kind of a lighter, still a lighter color. Here's this, let's see, more white. Here we go. Here's this one, this one, 
that one and this can overlap. Okay, and that's the same thing here. One, two, three, four. Okay, you're, you're with me so far? Then we've got sort of a half a flower coming down here like this, a half a petal over this branch. Maybe we'll see part of that. And I get new paint each time, okay? And then I've, I want something coming underneath this branch like that. And then I'm going to come over here with this little foot, it would be. And I'm going to put a petal there. And I get new paint each time. And how about behind him? Let's get a little bit of burnt sienna with that. Um, one, two. These going to be a little smaller. Now, what you want to do is come over here like this and put the flowers on this side of the um of the of the canvas, right? When you're doing this. Uh give me one second. Uh pause for one second, John, for a second for me. All right, didn't want to blow my nose on you guys. All right, so now I'm going to come under this one and show some petals. Okay. And a little bit of the burnt sienna and yellow and white. Okay, just a little bit of that. Just put a little yellow in it now. Let's brighten a couple of these up. And then here's some coming down here like that. Ooh, and over here, just I mean, this is fun, you guys. This is so you, you just you don't even see the edge of his. You're gonna see a little bit of him, and then you want to come down here. You can't. You generally don't see the bottom of these, but if you want to bring a few flowers down here on the bottom, you could just sort of suggest it when you're. That's the beauty of a gallery wrap canvas, and the same thing here with this um branch. You might want to put this branch down here and just have that branch coming like that and maybe it's doing this right it's just a bigger part of the tree and then later you can come back and add some flowers so that's the first part of our flowers how are we doing on time pretty good right all right you got 130 my queenness you got 20 minutes to go well then i if we have that kind of time what do you say we just take a minute and dry it Let's just dry what we've got, okay? Okay. You're going to dry it, dry it? Dry it, dry it with the hair dryer. Okay. All right. Well, she's drying that. Hey, we'd like to give you guys the opportunity to uh, register for our auction site. These items are up for auction. All the originals, once again, will be up for auction at gingercookauction.com. And I think I need to make that text again. I used to have it, but I had to rebuild things. I don't have it. So gingercookauction.com. We will have that up on the next show if I don't get it up later this show. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, please do so. We would appreciate it. We'd love to see 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, if at all possible. We are the struggling artists, as it were. And we think we have a good show here and love to have you be a part of the family. Yeah, and don't forget to watch us every Monday night at uh, 530 Central. Am I back on? Did you put me back on? I did, my queen. I did not forget this time. Okay. So um, now I can come here and, and tweak this a little bit. Everything, see, these are all dry, right? And I can come back and tweak it. And um, so what I want to do now is um, make sure that I have, you know, have some dark here. Um sure that's dark enough here on his head. Um, just make sure he's a little fuzzy out here like that with the back of his head, like that. And little, uh, make sure that there's a little windblown some, look. Yeah, give him a little windblown look right here. And um, yeah, it never hurts to just sort of touch, you know, touch up a little bit. Now the, um, let's come down on this beak a little bit more than we did. There you go. All right, so to get the to get his eyeball, this is where you want like a, a black Sharpie or a black Posca pen or something like that, right? And um, you just kind of come in here in the middle and give him the round eye, the old round eye trick. 
okay? We're going to get a little bit lighter on the right side than the left side, okay? There's his eye, and if I wanted to, I was a little worried about his feet. This is where you might take a, a pen, right, if you needed to do something with his little toes, right? If you weren't sure, right? You'd come up and, so, you know, some of you may want to have a few little more feathers, you know, kind of a more of a feathered look, and you can get that with, you know, that's what the advantage of using a Posca pen is that you can, you have a little more control over your details, and that's all. And it's acrylic ink, and so they're kind of nice to use for that. Um, what I want to do now is um, uh, add some highlights, and because acrylics dry darker, that you can take that to the bank. Acrylics dry darker, so if you want some few little light streaks in the wings, now's the time to put them. You need something a little lighter up on the top of his little head or on his beak. Now's the time to put it, right? So you can do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I wanted to show you something. This one's really important. We didn't put yellow oxide out, okay? Um, and, but let me show you how to make it. This is, real, this is yellow oxide out of the tube, and this is yellow oxide using cad yellow medium and burnt sienna and i don't think we even have that one in our that formula in our color mixing journal so you guys that um have bought our quintessential color mixing journal of uh, videos to have how to mix your own colors uh, you want to add that one to your yellow and burnt sienna make a yellow oxide so i, I just want to and i think it's actually a prettier color than just the plain yellow oxide don't you john so more rich now yeah. this on the other hand is what you can't make are bright oranges. Those are, you know, if you need a really, really bright orange, you almost have to buy it like cat orange. Because remember, reds are primary colors. You can you can get an orange using cad yellow medium in red, but it'll never be as bright as say a cad as a cad um, cadmium cadmium orange. So sometimes people want to know what color should I buy? What do I have to have? And that's something. All right, so let's make that little bit of yellow here and a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's make a tiny little bit of kind of a yellow oxide color, okay? And let's take a little, I'm going to put a little cad red medium in it too because I want it to be just a little warmer than that. And I want to come up here and add a few, a little bit of this color like centers in our flowers, okay? I just want to suggest there might be some uh, little dots of color here somewhere coming through from our flowers like that. I do that over here too. Yeah, that's, that's just, it's funny if you can do the smallest little things, it doesn't have to be big and just sort of plop it on there. Everyone doesn't have to have it, but you can have some flowers that are overlapping other flowers. That's always a fun thing to do. Um, you can, uh, once you've been into yellow, we could still come back and add a few more flowers. Remember I wanted to put a few over here Here, maybe like that, down the side. That's what makes a painting like this really pretty is when you when you have a gallery wrap, if you include some of the design. All right, and also we have, if you'll remember, there were some flowers up here. Maybe you don't know, but I was putting some. I designed this ahead of time, um, so I wouldn't have to think about it now. And that's always a good idea. Now, here's some white, titanium white. Now, this is the second coat of flowers I want to have show up a little more. Okay, so they all don't have to show up, but remember white's one of these, even if you're painting a white wall, sometimes two coats can be effective, right? Yeah, so think about how you want your your flowers and maybe you want a few more coming down. Like I say, I'll cross the bottom like that. You can do it. These are really almost like little sculpture works of art. They're really nice. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of this white and put it on this side of his head. You can use a little white Posca pen for that, too. And this, from about 12, 12 o'clock to about 6 o'clock on the um, right-hand side of that circle, I'm making it a little lighter because it wasn't as light as I'd like. And you're going, wow, that's kind of cool, right? So now let's come back to some of this green color. And I know I want a dark Let's see, take a little phthalo green and burnt sienna and make something a little darker. I want a dark branch. Wipe the white off. 
here on a what dark branch kind of coming up this way and I want to make sure that this branch shows up and I might just put a few bits of green places there we go just a, a habit all right so so far so good yes and yes so now what we're doing okay this is some key I know you thought this bird was going to be terribly difficult. And look how cute he is. And not hard. Just a little bit take some of that magenta color. Yeah. Pure magenta now. Let's brighten this up. Like that. And let's put a little bit of that magenta right there. A little bit back here on his wings. Yeah. And we'll see what else. Um, oh, I remember. Coming back to me now. Take some white and ultramarine blue. And do that on the top of this leg like that. And just kind of indicate a foot. Yeah, there you go. What else? Something lighter here. I just I didn't get quite the the blue on top of his head like I wanted. And uh, let's see, what else did I want to do? Oh, yeah. Any questions, John, why I'm busily painting this bird? I do not think so, my queenness. Okay. Um, yeah, just a little bit with white here. Just just tint that a little bit right there. Those cheeks. That's a white, but we're going to tint that a little bit right there. Now let's do some cad yellow, medium, and yellow. Well, Mostly I guess yellow. I'd like to know what about yellow napal? But you got yellow what? Napal. Napal. Hmm. She wrote napal. Maple shell. There's all just different kinds of yellows. They're all primary. It's nice to own them all, really, honestly. <laughs> you don't own them all. I'd say buy them all, but you can get away with cat yellow medium. You can get away with, um, you know, not owning them all, right? You have that, um, you know, a good Posca pen, the fine Posca pens. This is one of the real fine ones we bought. And notice we wrote the date on these. This was thanks to PJ, wasn't it? PK? Yes. PK, uh, you know, sent us these, 8, 15, 21. It's a brand new one. When you're doing a Posca pen, you've got to shake them up. Making sure the cap is on securely. Yeah, I, I'm telling you what, in pens past, I used to buy, before Poscas came out, I used to buy, Sharpie is a, a, a giant pen company. They make pens that will go under the, right under the ocean and up on outer space. I mean, they, they've got like thousands of different kinds of pens. And they used to, I think they still do make an oil painting pen. And I liked them, but they would dry out on me really fast. They didn't last very long. And the minute you put the mark down, it was done. You couldn't get rid of it. Okay? You had to paint over it. Where Poscas don't dry for a while, they're real acrylic. But you want to pump them gently. Don't pump them hard. You'll ruin the tip. And you want to pump them gently here like this. There's a little bit of light dot right here up in the top, top of his eye like that. Isn't that cute? Come on, you guys. And if you didn't quite get the little cheeky things here, you can do that. And there's a little bit more white here on the um on his uh feathers, and this is how you can get that kind of look right there. All right, good. And so what you do here, and I want I want to have his back got a little bit, I want a little bit more gold on his back up here like that. It's just needed to come out a little bit more than I had it. Let's just brighten this up right here. Put a little bit more white with that and lighten this up right here. It's kind of a light yellow. You can kind of see that, right? There you go. So he's got that. We're... Come on, you guys. That's He's a fun little bird, isn't he? Yeah, and you'll notice we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't use black. And we just, uh, we just had fun with the... Um, uh, with all the nice colors. And we're just going to lighten up this branch a little more. It's just interesting when you do small little things like that. Just, just, just brings it to life. Yeah, just just the smallest little things. I, but see, we're going to gallery wrap around here. Now, there we go. Again, you can go ahead and do some of that if you want. You know, kind of this two-tone business. Or there's a little green. And I've got a little bit of that two-tone green in some of these. Just a few little dots here. 
not all of them, but there you go. So that is to me, a, you know, really fun. And now the last thing, cause I've got time, right? Well, I think that's yes, it, isn't it. You got huh? 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes. Yep. Well, we were doing four, 45 minutes. You're doing 50 minutes. 50 minutes. I have 10 minutes. Okay. So I want to show you something. For those <laughs> of you who want to be the last of the big spenders. I me, knew it. You're going to bring out the big guns, aren't you? I want you to see. This is modeling paste. I knew it. And if you add some white to modeling paste, for those of you who want to do this, and you want your flowers to be thicker, if you take some, just make the final colors in a cup. You don't have to do all of them, but if you want that sort of oil painting, fat, fat look of an oil painting, you can add modeling paste and it gives it more of a 3D effect. And I wouldn't do it on the bird. I just want to say sometimes, you know, you've seen.